Welcome to episode one of the Four Downs podcast, where we bring you the trending topics in the NFL world in 20 minutes or less. We are a production of Chaotically Intolerant Multimedia. Here with me is the president of Chaotically Intolerant, Alex Boyajian. Let's go. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have a, uh, another show uh, under our belt. This is uh, three now. Um, Draft America launched this week. And, uh, you know, let's, let's do it. It's football. Football is back. Hopefully people can uh, catch up on all the football they need on their commute uh, in the morning while they're eating breakfast. That's our goal here with the uh, short yep. form. Just hit the topics and go. Yep, absolutely. But uh, let's let's uh, let's jump into our first topic. How about it? So uh, let's recap Buffalo versus Miami. Um, obviously, uh, in this game, unfortunately, Tua Tagovailoa did suffer the third serious concussion of his career. There are questions uh, about how he goes forward, how the Dolphins handle him um, here on out. However, I do want to talk more about the Buffalo Bills offense. Week one, they pulled it out with Josh Allen uh, handling a lot of the work with his legs at the goal line. This week, it was the James Cook show. He looks like LaDainian Tomlinson. Um, a lot of usage with his legs. He caught a touchdown through the air on top of his two rushing touchdowns. We have not seen the Dalton Kincaid or Keon Coleman breakout. Um, many people were anticipating that they would come in and fill in the role or the void filled by Stefan Diggs and Gabriel Davis leaving. However, we have not seen that. And Josh Allen, um, only 190 some odd passing yards um, on limited attempts with his arm. So my question to you is, what does this offense look like going forward the rest of the year? Is it going to be ride the hot hand? Are we going to see a big James Cook season? What are your thoughts? Well, the, the hand injury um, to, to Allen, they, they were a little, I, I think they lent or leaned on James Cook because of that, because of the hand injury. They want to be careful with him. Of course you want to be careful with him. That's, that's the intelligent thing to do. Josh Allen is not smart with his body. I think we all know that. Um, so it is up to the coaches to make sure he is smart with his body. Um, I, I would look... I would look to, to see a lot more from James Cook over the coming weeks as Allen recovers from that hand injury. But I think as we get later into the season, it, it's going to be the Josh Allen show again, which that's Buffalo's identity. I think they are going to rely on the ground a lot more, though, compared to the Pats, because you don't have those, you know, Gabe Davis was your real deep threat. He was he was your kind of more of your streaking type of guy. And you have Stefan Diggs, who just pretty much did everything for them. You don't have those guys there anymore. You have Dalton Kincaid. You have um, Khalil Shakir. Like, those are your guys. Now you have James Cook, who it, we didn't expect him. I don't think a lot of Bills fans really expected last night. Um, is he going to continue that? I don't know. We'll see. Um, that's not that's not our job to, uh, to predict. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a bit more of a run-heavy, ground-heavy game until Allen feels 100%. And, I mean, that's really what it should be, I think, to start the season, especially with Allen. You, you want to see a little bit more of a ground game, see what you have on the ground. And then later in the year, if you're making a playoff push, okay, now you start attacking through the air. Yeah. Uh, concerning for me, um, Keon Coleman, zero targets, um, zero yards, oh, yeah. obviously. Or Sorry, one target, zero catches, zero yards, obviously, in this game. Um, he is a guy that they were anticipating taking some of the – pressure off of guys like Shakir and Kincaid, and that has not yeah. appeared to be the case. Um, but like you said, you know, they do need some time to figure out what this new offense is going to look like, minus their two biggest threats uh, through the year last year. And I do expect Josh Allen being Josh Allen to figure it out. Hopefully it doesn't come at the cost of him trying to do too much. Uh, we have seen Josh Allen in recent seasons when he does try to do too much, get into some trouble with interceptions, or, like you said, put his body on the line uh, unnecessarily. So, hopefully, yeah. that's not the case here. This does seem like a team, without Stefan Diggs, though, that is more reliant on sticking with what's working in a specific uh, period instead of trying to force it to Diggs, who seemed to have sort of a penchant for demanding the ball, even when it wasn't in the best interest of the team. So, Let's see where, where this goes going forward. As a Chiefs fan, I hope Buffalo maybe takes a step back this year. But in a division that 
has the Jets obviously did not look great uh, in my perspective. Um, you have the Dolphins now without Tua uh, for the foreseeable future. I do think the Bills could run away with this division this year. Yeah, I uh, well, obviously the Dolphins, that wasn't really something we would have expected. Um, yeah. they, they did say they're going out to sign some sort of veteran quarterback. I know Tannehill's out there. Um I wish I had my list. We, we only have like 38 seconds. Um, there, I'm sure there's some other veterans out there. Um, just go go, go do something. I, I know the Browns aren't going to get rid of Jameis Winston. I would love to see Jameis Winston in Miami with Tyreek Hill. Oh, my God. Oh, my uh, God. A lot of I would love even, to see. Even without just, success. <laughs> just, just the comedy that would come out of that. The comedy that would come out of Jameis and Tyreek together. Think of all the celebrations they would do on the field. Yes. Oh, my God. I, I love it. I would love it, but Cleveland's not letting him go. There's no way you let him go, especially with what's well, what is now Watson transpired with Watson playing. with the legal cases. Yeah, but also just his play in general. Our next topic, we're going to talk Sunday slate, um, starting with the 1 o'clock games, and we're going to do as quick as possible, pick each game. So I'll read off the game. Alex, why don't you make the pick this week? Maybe next week we can flip-flop. Okay. Raiders so, going to the Ravens. Uh, give me the Ravens. Very easy. Browns visiting the Jaguars. Uh, I think this is a bounce back game for the Jags. The Browns are. Uh, I, I said I said it last week on chaotically intolerant. Uh, Deshaun Watson, ever since he's been in Cleveland, looks uninspired. Even I know he had that's, personal tragedy last week. He still looked uninspired even before that. Yeah, that's that's uh, taking it lightly. Uh, Jets versus Titans. Uh, give me the. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I flip flop on this one. I think I picked the Jets to win in our bets. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of leaning a little bit towards Tennessee. I don't know why. Smart. That's the smarter pick. 49ers going up north to see the Vikings. Uh, <laughs> give me the 49ers, man. <laughs> no, no CMC, uh, no CMC. But give me the 49ers, anyways. They, the running game still looked outstanding last week. Chargers, yeah. Panthers. I mean, is that even a competition? Do, do the Chargers have to field the starters? Give me the Chargers. It's, they don't. Uh, they could field their children and still be the Panthers. Uh, Seahawks visiting the Patriots, two 1-0 and teams. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people are looking at, at this spot as a New England um, kind of trap spot because no one expects them. I think they're, I think they're expecting a, a really good defense, which is what I expected all year. I, I said they had a really good defense. Um, I'm... S- Still going to take the Seahawks. I don't know why. I think the offense, I think they might be able, you know, who, who has the better offense and who has the better defense? Pats clearly have the better, or they have the better defense. Um, I just think the offense is so much better on the Seattle side. Even without Kenneth Walker this week, I agree. Yeah. Um, Charbonnet, man. Cowboys. I love Charbonnet. Great name, too. Yeah. Um, Marvin Gaines. Give me the Cowboys. Early, Cowboys. early game. <laughs> Early season, Cowboys are unstoppable. Give me the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, Giants, Commanders, tough pick. I, I would say coin flip, but what do you Who's think? Who's going to watch this game? Who's watching this fucking game? Uh, I'm going Commanders because of Jaden Daniels. Smart pick. Love the guy. Uh, Bucks, Lions, this is your favorite game. You want to come back to this at the very end? Let's come back to it. Yep. Okay. Colts, Packers, I know where you're going. Uh, no, you don't. I'm going Packers because I don't trust our secondary whatsoever. It's Malik Willis. I also, I pay, I imagine the worst when it comes to the Colts as well. So that's true. Give give Uh, me a little, give me a little leeway. Rams Cardinals. (laughs) Uh, going Rams. I know it's a a tight line. Broncos. Oh, sorry. Um, Steelers Broncos. Steelers. I, I still like the Steelers there. Smart. Bears Texans. Give me the Texans. It's a uh, very good offense with an average defense versus a pretty good defense and a horrible offense so far. Yeah, I don't. I think that's going to be a, a massive blow. And then we'll also do the uh, the Eagles and Falcons. This is in Philadelphia on Monday night. I, you know what? I'm going uh, no, but Atlanta always kind of struggles with Philly, so I'm going Philly. Historically, right, so. they struggle with Philly. We also we did skip over the uh, Bengals and Chiefs. That is going to be our next topic, so we will come back to that as well. But you wanted uh, in about a minute and a half we got left here. You want to talk Buccaneers Lions? What intrigues you so much about that game other than um, NFC Showdown uh, rematch from the playoffs last year? Well, the Commanders have no defense, as we saw last week. They're well, not no defense, but their defense is not the best. Um, 
I, I do like Baker Mayfield. I was happy to see what he did. Um, there was an interesting story put up by one of our guys, Serafino, on the blog. Uh, go check out chaoticallyintolerant.com about Baker. Um, but obviously this is a playoff rematch. I love playoff rematches. I don't like playoff rematches this early in the year. I think you're burning your playoff rematch card very early, and that would be the same thing with chiefs Bengals. Um, same thing with Chiefs and Ravens. Chiefs as well. Ravens. Yeah, um, they're burning a lot of early. They're burning a lot of rematches early. Um, but I think both teams are co- both teams are coming in hot. You have these teams. I think right now they're the favorites to win their division. I think that's a pretty fair thing to say because you look at the North. Who's who's in the North right now? Bears aren't really there. Um, Vikings are not. Uh, who's the other one in the North? Oh my God, I'm blanking on the North. Uh, Packers. Um, Packers. Uh, the Packers. I mean, who knows with Jordan Love? We'll see when he comes back. Yeah. Um, and then the Bucks. I mean, the NFC South. Don't even get me started with the NFC South. Maybe the Saints. Maybe, but really no. Uh, but I, I, I love Baker. I love Jordan Lo- or uh, Jared Goff, and and I'm really excited to see uh, this rematch. Who are you taking? I'm gonna go. This is we're going over, but that's fine. I'm gonna go. I I I see the Bucks here. I like the Bucks. I think the Lions are in for a little bit of a letdown. It was an emotional win. You know, coming yeah. out, you, you lost or you you win. You know, it's back to back wins against the Rams. Remember, and they should have um, won by a lot more. They should yeah. have beat the Rams by a lot more than they did. And, and the right, Rams were gassed in overtime. So yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with the Bucks here. So this is a uh, next topic. Whenever you're ready to put it up, we can cut there oh, and then. Yeah, you're good. <clears throat> this one's gonna get emotional here. All right, our next topic, we are talking Chiefs and Bengals. Uh, as many of you viewers know, if you follow Catholic Intolerant, I am a Chiefs fan. Um, I will try to keep my personal bias out of it, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Um, well, Bengals, personal oh, bias sorry. is our name. That's, that's what you're supposed to be. We're not, yeah, we're, not, we're not the New York Times. We're not supposed to be unbiased. Chiefs by 40. <laughs> um, Bengals are back at it with their bullshit. Um, we have Cam Taylor Britt saying that Xavier Worthy can only run fast in a straight line. He can't do anything else. We have Jamar Chase saying that the Bengals are still the team to beat in the AFC. Um, They just need to start playing like it. I don't understand the motivation behind this. You know, the Chiefs are a team that loves bulletin board material. Are the Bengals 3-1 against the Chiefs in the Burrow and Mahomes era? Yes, the Chiefs are the back-to-back reigning Super Bowl champions. Uh, no, the Bengals are not the team to beat in the AFC. The Chiefs are the team to beat in the NFL, uh, top to bottom. They tried this two years ago uh, before the playoffs with their Borough head uh, nonsense. They got their mayor involved, and that didn't work out for them. The Bengals are coming off a offseason uh, with Joe Burrow recovering from injury, Jamar Chase holding out, losing Tyler Boyd, and now a T. Higgins injury. What is your take on their you know their motivation for trying to poke the bear do you think they're trying to hype themselves up do you think they're trying to get in Mahomes head uh, what's your take because I think it's a load of bullshit to be honest I, I think it's juvenile so first I don't I'm, I'm a Colts fan I have no real bias for or against the Chiefs if anything I actually have more of a bias for the Bengals I've always been a little soft I have a soft spot for the Bengals I love the Red Rocket I love watching those those like that first playoff game that was like reserved for Cincinnati versus the AFC South or like the yeah. wild card or something. It was always hilarious when when they would just get their the shit kicked out of them. Um, we even had Akeem Davis Gaither, who I still think he yeah he's still playing for the Bengals, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we had him on the show, um, so I'm always gonna root for the Bengals. Um, I have no clue why these teams are are just giving them giving the Chiefs bulletin board material. I understand you got to be confident. But you're giving them bullets and board material. We're doing the same thing as we did last year and the year before. You're you're just adding fuel to the fire. The the best thing you can do if you lose, you be quiet, you go to work, and all you say is the the most you say is we'll see him in we'll see him in January. We'll see him yeah. in January. That's all you do. That's a, that's all you need to do because at the end of the day, like they've they've been burned. They have. They've gotten burned. They do play the Chiefs tough, so I think this is going to be a close one again. Even last year was tough with uh, with Browning. That was yeah. Browning, right? Am I correct? Yeah, it gave me. Uh, I had about four to five heart attacks during that game. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, they 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 always play us close. However, I think with like I said, with the injuries of Burrow, Burrow did not look good last week. 
if they were coming off, they I mean, start he, he was a yeah he was efficient, um, but he didn't look strong. I don't think he looked to be in uh, a healthy form. I would think this kind of strategy would be coming off a big win, not losing to the Patriots, um, and not in the second week of the season. Uh, we will see how it plays out for him. I don't love the Bengals' offense this year. Um, Jamar Chase is going to take a while to get going. He held out. Uh, no Tyler Boyd, no T. Higgins. It's that three-headed monster that has you know, helped them in the past. It's been what gets Jamar Chase so open. It's what opens up the running game. It's what allows Joe Burrow to go out there and kind of play his game. They don't necessarily even have a number two receiver right now behind Jamar Chase. So... I think it's going to be Chiefs by a lot. Uh, I think this is going to be a blowout win. It's going to be the first time the Chiefs blow out the Bengals uh, during the Mahomes era uh, and the Burrow era. And then, like you said, odds are we'll see them again in the playoffs. And it'll be a completely different story when they come in healthy. I, I do want to say T. Higgins, I don't, I don't know what his status is right now. They're still saying he's he missed practice this week. He's questionable. Um, T. Higgins is a great number two. I gotta mm-hmm. say, um, I I like their offense. They they do get started slow. I think this we, we'll look back at this game. I think in in probably about three four months and say that wasn't that wasn't the Bengals. And we might say that wasn't the Chiefs. We don't know. I mean, they could get better. They could get worse. Who knows? I think I just that's why I hate these rivalry games so early. I hate them. Um, but I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Kansas City by a hair, a whisker. Go Kansas City by a whisker. Man. All right, so last topic is going to be Shannon Sharp. If you want to start up, we do need to we need to go a little under here. Um, can I, can I introduce this one? This is my favorite. Absolutely, one. this was this was actually your idea. So this is your topic. I want to hear you start off on it because I read a little bit about it and I saw what you sent me on Instagram. Um, I laughed in the gym out loud. So <laughs> I kind of want to hear what you have to say about it. I think a lot of people can uh, can predict what we're going to talk about. Well, it's also going to be in the description. But um, Unk, Shannon Sharp, going to IG Live, getting it. You know, listen, listen. I'm not, like, I, some people are angry at him for some reason. I don't really understand why. First off, he came out. At first, he said it was, it was a hack. That was probably an initial, like, oh, fuck. Like, I, I just got, I just got leaked having sex. Oh no, like, I'm just gonna say I got hacked. He came out, he was honest. That, that was one of the most heartfelt apologies I've heard from, from like, an athlete or a celebrity. It, yeah, it was, he put together it an emergency honest. podcast. He, he, yeah. he, 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 he got it, he got it together. And Ocho Cinco is hilarious in that clip. He's just laughing. He's laughing the whole time. I wish they kept the audio on him because there are times they cut his audio out because Shannon Sharp is talking. Um, but listen, Unk has to get it in. He's got to get it in. He's got. He's a what? Fifty six year old years old. You, you listen. Life doesn't end at fifty six. He doesn't um, look that old. I'll tell you. No, that. he, he is, looks fantastic. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, he's so, he's, he's a monster. <laughs> what I here, here's the weird way. thing. So, and I'm not saying there's anything nefarious. I'm not saying there's a cons- conspiracy afoot. However, I don't know what you're gonna say? Yeah. He said he's never been on Instagram Live before. How did you your first Instagram Live? Because I've been on Instagram Live before. <laughs> Who was pushing the yes, uh, give permissions, allow <laughs> access to the microphone buttons while, well, you know, he's in the middle of the deed? I'm not saying this is a conspiracy because Shannon Sharp doesn't need the publicity. Who is setting up his Instagram live? And he says that he threw his phone down on the bed. Yeah, throwing your phone down on the bed. I've butt dialed before. I've never butt lived before. Um <laughs> It's it's weird. The whole thing is weird. It's it's hilarious. And if it truly was an accident, it's the funniest accident I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. More power to the guy. He did handle it well. Um, he says that his pub, uh, publicist, okay, while he's in the act, you know, yeah. doing grown man he, things. He logged into his Instagram to shut it down. Yeah. yeah. He said his publicist called him during the act um, to tell him that the whole world, 2.5 million followers, uh, we're following this. Obviously, if this is going on for two or three minutes, people yeah. are on on X. People are on Thread saying, "Check out Shannon Sharp's live. He's doing it." Yeah. And so people were people were watching. Uh, but he yeah, he said his boys, his publicist, 
uh, his agent all ding, 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 and he knew something was up. I don't know. It, it, it's a very strange, hilarious mistake. And if it was a publicity stunt, it did its job. Because I, I haven't heard... I really, I really don't think it was a publicity stunt. He was talking, Ocho Cinco was like, dude, you've been talking about how bad you are with technology. I've been telling you you need to get get better with technology. You know? I don't... I, I When I laugh, I'm like... Because I saw them laughing about it. I'm laughing, like, with them. I'm, I'm not laughing yeah. at at him that's if that was obviously that is a tough situation like that is a very intimate moment you don't want to share it i i would not blame him if he was like yeah this isn't really that funny but you know they were they were cracking jokes about it all the time or all episode (laughs) but let's be um, serious it's the funniest thing ever it is funny and 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 his i don't know if you actually watched the video he's you can hear him just like Oh, and it's like that's <laughs> a man. Yeah, podcast. he's getting it I in. Podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so listen, good. all right, we that are, was we just are a... out of time. We are at oh, twenty-three are? minutes now. Pardon us for going a little over twenty minutes. It's our first episode. Uh, we will try to get this to you in twenty minutes or less every week. However, <laughs> uh, we're we're just a few minutes over. If you follow us all the way through, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we're gonna be doing this every Saturday giving you the top topics for the NFL week. Um, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Spring Hill Sports Cards and check out chaoticallyintolerant.com and our other podcasts through our network. Alex, thank you for coming on. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. If not, it'll be me or another guest. Have a good night. Yep.